released the last year for, well, everything, Double Dragon Gaiden was arguably the best game we had in 2023. Arriving packed with characters and a new interesting formula, Double Dragon was missing only a few things that could make it perfect. Now, 9 months later, the game is giving birth to a new set of characters and challenges. The update is released today and is completely free, and we will take a look at what it will offer, but before all that, hi, I am Savino, and welcome to the Flying Kick channel. If you never heard about Double Dragon Guide, then I can only hope the rock you were living under was comfortable enough, because as I stated, this was, in my opinion, the best game from 2023, and it is one of my all-time favorite. If you want to check what the game is about, go watch my review, which, despite being a little bit outdated since the game got a few patches after that, is good enough to give you an idea about the game. But enough procrastinating and let's talk about the update. As many of you know, the upgrade is bringing three new characters and three new modes for the game. The characters are the new fan favorite Sonny Lee, who some call the third lost brother, but nobody knows for sure. Chin Semei, the Chinese warrior from Double Dragon 3, and the one and only Hanzo, the ninja, also from Double Dragon 3. The first thing you need to know is that you will need 150 tokens to unlock the three characters. Just like the mysterious man, you will need to grind a few runs to gather some of the tokens, unless you're like me and have more tokens than you ever need. The characters are awesome, incredibly overpowered, it's true, but they are fun to play with and you will not feel like they break the game. Sony is my favorite on this update, he's fast enough and his fight style, we can't, or drunken fighting. It's not only fun to watch, but it's also incredibly effective, and it fits the character pretty well since he looks to be with a heck of a hangover. Sonic can't use any weapons and can't grab enemies, but to compensate for that, he can do a handstand when pressing A, where he will spin his leg around hitting enemies left and right. This can be a pretty good way to start or finish a combo with him. Hanzu, as you can expect, is the fastest of the new batch of characters. He also can't use weapons except for his sword and can't grab enemies, but he can teleport, hitting enemies with a cloud of dust that freezes them in place makes things a little bit easier for you to escape or attack. Hanzo can be a pretty effective character since his aerials can easily hit enemies on the ground, throwing them up and opening new opportunities to combo. What I mean by that is you can easily infinite enemies and bosses with him. And finally Chin. Chin was the most powerful character in Double Dragon 3 and he is not different here. Like the others, he can't grab or use weapons, but he can roll and attack by pressing A, which can be great for finishing some enemies, and his claw can be pretty effective, especially because he can use it as a hook to fish some enemies for him to finish, just like Linda with her whip. Despite being one of the big guys in the game, Chin is not as low as a Bobo or Burnov, and is probably one of the more powerful characters in the game. In the end, there's nothing to complain about the characters here, yes, they are all a bit overpowered, but that's because they are a better fit for the survival mode more than the story mode. And since I mentioned the survival mode, let's talk about the extra modes. The game has now an online mode, which unfortunately wasn't available before today, survival and a versus mode. The versus mode is as basic as in Double Dragon 1 for the NES. You pick your duo, your friend pick his duo, and you fight until death. It is cool that they added this option, but it's really not for me. Maybe the option to play against the computer could be interesting, but I'm not a competitive guy and let's be honest, no one can put a challenge to me here in my house, so things get boring fast for everyone. And finally, the start of the update, the survival mode. You know the deal, pick a duo to play and face increasingly challenging enemies wave after wave until you die or get bored or the universe ends, I don't know, you do you. Here you will find the new backgrounds from the classic games like the airport from Super Double Dragon or the rooftop from Double Dragon 2, the arcade version. Although there aren't a lot of backgrounds here, they will often have variations in form of hazards like electric floor, pits and things falling over your head. In one of the scenarios, the matting garage, you will face some cars passing on the street which will kill most of the enemies for you. Well, it will kill you too if you aren't fast enough. 
After beating a wave, you will have the chance to buy upgrades for your characters, which can look expensive at first, but soon you will have enough cash to not worry about it. There is a bit of strategy involved here too, since your health does not replenish when you beat a wave. Yes, you still can get fooled by killing enemies with your special, but if the wave ends and your health is low, the only way to replenish it before the next level is by picking the turkey, which is free, instead of the upgrades. So you better keep your characters healthy, because it's almost impossible to face later waves with your vanilla character. You will need those upgrades. Which, by the way, there are a bunch of new ones. I won't spoil them here, but you can be sure there's enough new stuff that will change a lot how you play the game. Now, while I think the survival mode is pretty fun and can actually be the better way to play the game from now on, there's not much of an incentive to keep playing. Yes, you can get tokens to unlock new characters and backgrounds, but if you're like me and have enough tokens to unlock everything, reaching higher levels on survival won't give you anything. I mean, Turtles gave you some cool alternate colors to unlock and Streets of Rage 4 gave you new moves, but here it's all about the challenge. I'm not saying it was a bad choice, I mean, the games I mentioned were created by huge teams when compared to Double Dragon, so the lack of something more substantial is understandable. I also think we could use new star missions, but that's asking too much, especially from a free update. Overall, this is a pretty good and solid update for the game, the introduction of Sony as a playable character is something that I'm very happy to see. Yes, he was playable in Double Dragon 3 and 4, but here, thanks to what Way Ford started in River City Girls 2, he is a unique person and not a clone of the brothers. He has his own personality and he looks a pretty chill guy. The update is available now for all consoles and Steam and, as I said multiple times, it will cost you nothing. If you own the game, this is a no-brainer. If you don't own the game, that's the best moment to purchase it and play with your friends thanks to the addition of multiplayer. And that's it for the video guys, I hope you liked this quick look at this update and I will be back this weekend with another review for you guys, but meanwhile, I hope you all have an awesome day, and remember, keep it up.